Hi, I'm Stephen Crowley and today I'm going to show you how you can improve your watercolours. But first, let's take a look at the um, palette so you can paint along with me. They're all Cutman watercolours. I'll get it the right way around. I always have them in the same place so I know exactly where to go. We've got Ultramarine, Lemon Yellow, Payne's Grey, Lizarding Crimson, Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber and Light Red. We've got me Large Run Ranson Hake, which is my... Uh, brush of choice and we got 15 by 11 Fabriano um, 130 pound all the links to everything's in the video description I'm okay, starting with the big eye brush I'm just wetting it all over this will lubricate the paper stop it from crimping and make all the background nice and soft without the hard edges it'll all just sink sink away right I'm gonna go Start off with, I was going to go raw sienna there because I, I always do that on automatic pilot. This time I'm going to go a bit of, bit of ultramarine with a bit of Payne's grey in there. And then I'm just trying to create some sort of random effect. So I'm just going to stick the same colours, just dip the tips of the brush in just to bring the hair back together. A bit more blue, a bit more Pain's grey. Let's just try and get some sort of sort of mood and atmosphere into into, into this scene. Right, that's all. That's the background. That's all I'm going to do about the background. Now I'm going to switch the little brush. I'm going to sign two colours. Then these are the distant trees, far away, softening off against that water that's already on the paper. The paper's going to stay wet. But uh, I'm just looking at it. See if you look at it, if you see the light sort of shining off it, you can see that it's still wet. It gives you some idea of how long you've got. And while the paper's still wet, these will just soften off. And there's water down here, so I'm putting down reflections while I'm doing it at the same time. Just do them at the same time rather than doing them later, because then you've got to mess about mixing all the same colours on your brush and all this palaver. So I'm just going to get in a bit of paint, grey, a bit of uh, ultramarine. And there'll be, there'll be more trees in front of these. You won't, some of these will just be covered up, but you'll see some of these just through the gaps. It'll just help create that sense of depth looking through the scene into the distance. And the more depth you can create, the better, really. So, we're popping some on, and then see, like these ones now, if I press down harder, they go because I'm thicker, the line gets thicker. And as the paper slowly dries, the paint will go on stronger. So they're the uh, most distant ones. I might just, just have a little bit of a few twigs and branches here and there. Not a, not a huge amount. Just the idea of something going on. If you're going sideways or you don't always want them nice and vertical, you know, all parallel. It just looks a bit unnatural that way. So just reloading the brush again, Payne's grey. Ultramarine. You can see it's giving on a little bit stronger now because the uh, paper's just slowly starting to dry. Don't forget your reflections. And again, I'm just keep re reloading the brush, same two colours. Pressing down quite thick now. You can see that coming off. Makes the, uh, the, the trunks a bit thicker because these ones are slightly nearer. Don't forget your reflections down the bottom. And then what I'll do once, once there's enough of these in, um, yeah, what I have done, I've put the horizon, sort of the way I've done the reflections, I'm meant to come down slightly, up a bit high, 
I'm not so worried. No, actually, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. I can still bring it down to there. I'll just put some slightly stronger ones on there. See how it's drying now there? You can see the difference. I'll just put a little bit of foliage on and off on here and there. That's all I'm doing, just, just trying to get random random shapes. Now the paper has stretched slightly, you see how it's coming away from the board, so I'm just going to re-clip it with these uh, clips here on the, uh, to this piece of 9mm plywood that I use leaning against the easel. Almost at 90 degrees, only because it helps the, the, the camera angle, no other reason. And, um, you can have yours, you know, quite, uh, quite, almost flat, but as long as there's enough for gravity to bring the water and the paint towards the bottom of the page. You can paint at any angle really. Now I'm switching to the, the height now, so I'll just dip the tips in, tips of the water, just to bring all the hairs back together, like so. So I've got a nice chisel edge. And then I think I've only used the two colours so far, so I'm just going to stick with those. A bit of paint is grey, ultramarine. You can see, just a nice chisel edge. And then just put in some of these ones that are slightly closer. Not forgetting the reflections. Something up there. I'm gonna worry. There's not water all everywhere, so I'm, but I'm just gonna put them in anyway. I can always paint over them if it ends up being a, a river bank or something. Some some form of land. Um, there we go. Big building on up there. Put that reflection in. See the, I'm just, gonna, just being careful not to paint over everything I've done in the background. And what I'll do once I've got these big trunks in. Uh, just switch the, the little brush and put some some branches on, twigs and branches. A few smaller ones up there. Well, let's just switch to the other brush now. So, ultramarine, pine's grey. See these twigs and things coming down into this sort of central little light area. A few more on this side. Brush swishing all over the place. I know this is just like twigs on mass, so I'm, I'm not worried too much. Don't forget the reflections coming up. And then reloading the brush. More, a bit more water, reload that brush. The ones in the background down there. What I might do just a little bit of dry brush work. So I'm just going to clean the brush. I'm just going to squeeze the water out of it. Like that. Get the rest out on the tea towel. Just push it into the brush. Oops. Yeah. Push it in like that, and then just scuff it up a little bit. 
where the hairs are going everywhere, something like so. And then sticking with the same. I've only used the two colours so far, so I'm just going to stick with them. Little leaves here and there. Not too much, just to give the impression of a few leaves just scattered about the place. Don't forget the reflection down below in the water. That's all I'm going to do for that. Um, like most things in watercolour, um, best left subtle. So what I'm going to do now, now there's a sort of nice sort of raw sienery goldy type colour, so I'm now going to switch colours completely. And I'm going to go a bit of light red, raw sienna. Just make that a little bit bigger. So I don't want them both the same height. I want them, I want them different heights. And clean the brush. Let's switch to a sort of green. There's a, there's a little bit of green left. It's like a well, it's sort of like a winter scene. There's a little bit of green in there. Again, don't forget the reflection, I'll just do the reflection as I go along. So I'm going to go up there, I'm trying to sort of fill this area in a bit, but I want to be able to see, see right through. So I don't want to block it all in, just give the impression that there's something, something there. Changing the green slightly, just darkening it a little bit. Right, so next, just taking a little bit of raw sienna. And I'm just going to try and work out where the where the land lies. So I'm going to have it sort of sort of sweeping around like this. I think something like that. So the river's going to sort of flow flow around there, something. Something like that. So with that in, yeah, let's just darken that slightly. Bit of, bit of burnt umber. Touch of um, ultramarine. Just defining these, just where the bank is.
make sure this uh, is flat against the board. And just clipping it, re-clipping it, pulling it tight, re-clipping it. And then I want to keep this fairly light because I'll put some shadows in. If I put it in too dark, the shadows won't show up as nice. So let's just put some light colour in there just to just to fill this ground area in. So I'm just gonna I don't want it too dark, like I say, just a bit of raw sienna, a bit of lemon yellow. Put a bit more bit of burnt on back, a bit more ultramarine. And let's just put these in a little bit stronger. And what I might do is just put a little bit of a few little rocks here and there. just a few little rocks here and there scattered about coming down these banks towards the water it always shows up better in the in the darker areas Before I completely overdo it. Now what I want to do is give that a quick dry. Actually, before I completely dry it, sometimes I just like to just get a I just clean this brush, squeeze the water out of it. Get the rest out. Just so it's uh, just damp, just clean and damp. I mean, sometimes I find this makes nice, quite a nice effect. Get those hairs out. So we're just, sort of, just a clean, damp brush. And sometimes you just sort of catch the, catch the sides and sometimes get some uh, nice effects like this. So I'm just sort of catching the paint on the on the sides of the banks and bringing it out into the centre of the of the stream. Just, just helps create that makes it a little bit more watery. Looks like little ripples or something. Once I've got those in, I'm going to stick some shadows in. Just reset the brush if it goes, goes away out of shape. And then once, once the shadows are in, I might just stick a little, little fisherman or something, just to give it a focal point. Right, so make sure that's dry.
Just make a shadowy colour. I'm just going to go a bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of blue. Mix all those together. Just a bit more water, I think. Kind of just a little bit dry that was. So mixing those together, and then once once I'm happy with that, that's about right. Right, so the light source is going to be bad there, so I'm going to follow that line and then roughly trying to follow the contours of the land, pop these shadows in. Just darkening, just darkening these uh, trees, just trying to add to the effect. Shadows from these rocks. So that's the some of the left ones done. Now let's do some of these trees. So just following that line along there, and then pop these shadows in. Following the again, remember following the contours of the land up and down, up and down. Let's just darken those trunks a little bit just to make them look a bit more shadowy. Shadows here and there. That's that look like. So that's all the shadows I think. No getting too far mate. So again I'm just gonna try and get this dry brush again. So I just squeeze the water out of it. And I'll just I'll just scuff this up and then just do a little bit of just red on its own, I think. I'm just gonna go into the brook, just the light red. And imagine there's just some just flowers here and there growing. A bit of, just a little bit of colour to it, a few reflections in there. Just something growing here and there. Right. And then switch to the, uh, the little brush. I'm just going a bit of red, a bit of, bit of blue. Um, let's have a little fish man, where should we have him? Where's a good spot? Let's just have him in I think. I'm gonna start off with his with his body. And then I'm just gonna pop his legs in. Trying to envisage where the, the rod is. So the rod sort of going out like that. And obviously we just want a little reflection of something happening underneath. And just lightly reflect that rod. Yeah, I think that's that's about it. And we just want a little, just watching I'm not touching any wet paint, a little bird in the sky, uh, stick another one and another one. And last but not least, just stick your name, stick your name just in this corner down there. And I'm going to call that one finished, so let, let's see what it looks like with a mains on it. So this is uh, our main suit.
painting. So let's go in and have a closer look. Starting with the sky area, which was just ultramarine, Payne's grey. Brush that all the way down to the bottom. Carefully trying to leave some sort of light source through the middle somewhere. Once that was in, use the rigger brush to put in these, you can see the really the faint ones in the in the background. Put in where the paper was still wet. Uh, just about see some of the reflections in the water. Same on the other side. Put in, like I say, when the paper's still wet, and then they just sort of blend into the background, go all go really soft and, and very light, very light in tone, look so far away. Especially when you contrast it against this foreground one, put in much stronger using the the uh, using the big brush. So once all the trees were in, or at least most of them, it was then a case of completely switch the palette. Then it was bright colours in, sort of reds and uh, reds and yellows, the, the greens, just to create these sort of banks, sort of trees going up the bank here and the river bank, brushing coming round. Sweeping into the, the foreground, watching the river flow around the corner. Similar palette on this side. A few rocks sort of scraped out here and there, trying to create some sort of light and, sh and shadow behind. Then I sort of darken the trees and put the shadows in, trying to follow the contours of the land. Some of the rocks scraped out. See how the shadows go across the top of them, just to try and help create that that look of the uh, look of that light. Just some neat light red here, put in with a bit of dry brush just to help try and suggest a few flowers here and there. And you can see where I use that just that sort of just slightly damp brush just to catch the sort of edges of the banks and just to dab in it here and there across the water. Just so it makes it look like little uh, ripples and, and stuff in the water all the way down to the bottom here. Then we've got a little fisherman here, just to help create like a focal point for the scene. Got the reflection in as well. And then finally the little little birds there in the sky help add a bit of life. So that's it for today, thanks for watching. This will be my eBay shop with all my other paintings if you'd like to place a bid, help me out. Um, please subscribe if you haven't uh, done so already, I'd love to have you with us. Um, you'll be notified. I try and release videos every weekday. So keep practicing, um, any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.